Welcome back to the sweatshop boys and girls. In today's video we're going to be working on this 2011 Subaru Outback. In today's video boys and girls I'm going to be showing you how to swap out a left rear bearing on this thing. It's not your traditional bearing on its own. It is a complete hub assembly. So you get a brand new hub to mate to which makes your life easier if you're going to be doing brakes on your vehicle at some point because you won't have all that rust. Now just because it is a hub assembly doesn't mean that it is easier sometimes to get off, especially if you are in the rust belt. Although this is not a press fit item like a regular bearing or most of the older style of bearings, this thing in the rust belt will seize in place because of the rust that forms on all of the cars that we have to work on on a daily basis. Oh, the joys of being a rust belt mechanic. Anyhow, boys and girls, why am I telling you this at this juncture? of the video because if you are in the south you're probably gonna have absolutely no issues doing this on a jack if you're doing this up north in the rust belt you want to be able to get the vehicle up high enough so that you can knock the bearing and get a good swing with a hammer now that being said boys and girls if you can't get it up high enough that doesn't mean that you can't do it but it's going to make your life a bit harder now of course your first step is going to be to put this mammoth beast up in the air make sure if you're using a jack employ the use of jack stands and and get the back end up as high as you can then go ahead and fire off the wheel of the bearing that you're going to replace now boys and girls generally when you have a really bad bearing it's quite easy to diagnose you can take your hands put them on the top and bottom of the wheel and then shake it up and down or left to right if it is the rear you shouldn't of course have any play and if you do most times it is your wheel bearing in the rear this one in particular doesn't have any play but we know that the bearing is bad because it's making noise. So I'll show you how we diagnose it if we don't have any play. Of course, if you don't have any play, what you can do is one of the more common methods to diagnosing a bad bearing. You're going to rotate this wheel. Luckily, this one is bad enough to the point where we can test it without having to run the car. All we need to do is simply rotate this wheel, place your hand on the running gear anywhere on the suspension or anything that is connected to the hub of the vehicle. Of course, keep your fingers away from anything that will rotate. Definitely don't want your hand to get stuck between the wheel and the cowl. It's a terrible, terrible feeling and it's happened to me once in the past. Of course, hopefully you learn after one time. If you don't, well, yeah, better be strong. Rotate the wheel and just feel the suspension. You may be able to hear it on camera, but it is a slight whirring noise. Generally, the whirring noise of the bearing gets considerably louder as your speed increases. You'll also sometimes feel a slight vibration, especially as they get worse, the vibration will definitely kick in. So, boys and girls, in short, we know for sure that this thing has a bad bearing. Now, let's show you how to replace it. Get yourself a 19 mil, boys and girls, and fire off the lug nuts. Your next step, boys and girls, is going to be to take a flat screwdriver and pry the caliper forward just a bit. Your next step, boys and girls, is going to be to get a 14 millimeter deep socket and ratchet combination so you can pull off your caliper and caliper bracket as a whole unit, which means you're going to play find that rusted bolt on the rusted spindle. It's here and here. It's a bit hard to see because it's all pretty much the same color. I hope to God that it's easier for you guys at home. Before you get your ratchet, get a bungee cord nearby and hang it not so that it is in your way but in the vicinity so you can hang this stupid thing that way it's not hanging off of your precious brake holes grab your 14 mil and crank this guy loose then go ahead and do the top one And now with both of them loose, you can go ahead and work them out by hand. Whenever removing brake caliper bolts or bracket bolts, you always want to make sure both of them... Thanks, thanks a lot, Socket. You always want to make sure that both of them are loose before you attempt taking out one or the other. Tackle the bottom one. <sighs> Sound like a motor trend or like freaking speed TV mechanic. Tackle the bottom one. 
And now, simply grab your caliper and bungee cord it. That's not me, I can't be. It sounds like a TV show, man. Okay, boys and girls, with both bolts out of the way, take your bungee cord and hook it through the caliper in a safe place. Uh, because we're not taking off the boot here, there is a little section here where the nut is. You want to hook it through there, whatever's easy, really. But make sure you don't puncture any of the rubber components or get it stuck anywhere. And what I like to do is just loop it around the spring or somewhere, wherever essentially it's going to be out of the way. Okay, there we go. Essentially, I just wrapped it around the spindle sort of thing and it's got its weight up on the lateral arm, so we're good to go in that respect. Now, boys and girls, we can turn our attention to the rotor. What we need to do is pull it off the vehicle. What you need to do before you pull the rotor off is first things first, make sure you find out where the adjustment is. Uh, it looks to be that our adjustment is gonna be on the top side because our cable is down on the bottom. That way, if you are in the vicinity of the adjustment and this guy here gets stuck and wants to take off all your emergency braking components at the same time as whatever is left of the here that you have remaining on your head, what you want to do is slacken the adjuster off. But we're gonna attempt to do it without doing all that because it looks like the brakes were done in the last year or so. Can I get a hell yeah? <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, that's awesome. It came off relatively easy, boys and girls. In case you're wondering about what rust ridge I'm talking about, in this area here, right there where my thumb is, is where a layer of rust likes to build and then hook on to all of your emergency braking equipment. Well, boys and girls, our cable is up top here, but I was wrong. Our adjuster is down here. So um, if yours gets stuck, make sure that your adjuster port is down here, like most other Subarus. Adjuster port? That thing there, make sure it's down here. Adjuster hole. Yeah, let's call it adjuster hole. That sounds legit. With our braking components out of the way, boys and girls, we can now go ahead and fire off our CV nut. We are reusing this nut, so what we want to do here, right here, where it is staked, is unstake it. Get yourself a flat screwdriver or a flat chisel punch. And then, oh, that's too big, son of a bitch. Well, boys and girls, don't be like Jimmy. Get a screwdriver that's actually gonna fit into this little slot here and then knock this thing until it is at the same level as the rest of the circumference of the nut. Now boys and girls, get yourself a 32 mil socket and impact this guy off. Very important. That movement there, boys and girls, determines whether you will cry yourself to sleep at night. It essentially means that this, your CV shaft, is free from your hub. Thank you, God. Thank you very, 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 very much, God. Now, boys and girls, we have four bolts here. There are two on this side and two on that side that hold your bearing in. Of course, it may be a little bit hard to see because they are all the same rust color. Anyhow, not important. What we need to do is get a 14 millimeter swivel socket. What I like to do is attach it to a 10 inch extension. And then of course my gun. Work your socket extension gun combination into this area and then hammer these bolts out. Of course, for you boys and girls at home, it's going to be a lot easier because you won't have the camera in your way. Second thing is make sure you get the socket all the way on the bolt. You do not by any means want to destroy the head of the bolt. If you round it out, or damage it by not getting the socket on all the way and you have to somehow get it off or hammer on another style of socket in order to get the stupid thing off the car, you will have a horrible, horrible day or couple of days. So don't make that mistake. Get it on all the way and hammer. Oh, put the camera here. Oh, I swear to God. Let's take the extension off to get this last one out because cameras in the way which uh, sucks boys and girls with all of your bolts out boys and girls we can now go ahead and attempt to smash the bearing out now here is a tip and a trick that I will show you that will make your life considerably easier here's a hint you will need a bucket of bolts or a friend who has a shop who has a bucket of bolts essentially you're gonna need a bolt now boys and girls traditionally most technicians will get a slide hammer and smash this thing off of the front of the vehicle to that I say 
I have joints, specifically wrist and elbow and shoulders, that I would like to keep intact for as long as possible. I don't like doing aggressive sort of work. Uh, for you young guys in the trade, you will learn this the hard way or you will learn this quickly and become successful. This trade is extremely hard on your body. So if you can minimize the impact and damage that you do to your body, through percussion instruments like a slide hammer, unless absolutely necessary, you're going to take the easier route, unless you're an idiot. What we need to do here, boys and girls, is get a bolt, of course, that is exactly the same thread pitch and circumference so that we can put it into the hole. It doesn't have to be a good bolt, it just has to be a bolt that will take a licking and keep on ticking. It also has to be considerably longer than the bolt that came out of there. What you're going to do, boys and girls, is Put the bolt into the threaded portion of your hub. Make sure you get it all the way in. And then you're going to bash it a few times. And then you're going to switch holes and bash it a few more times. You have to continue to alternate holes or get multiple bolts, one or the other. But you don't want to continue to bash it in the one hole. That will send the bearing out cocked, which will cause you a headache. What you want to do, boys and girls, is get a hammer that is decent in size and begin smashing. Whatever you do, do not smash your CV boot or your CV. Don't smash anything other than the head of the bolt because that will give you a headache. probably going to do this off camera the reason being is because my camera is in the way and I currently can't swing very well of course after smashing a few times what you want to do is check for movement of course we don't have any movement because this is the rust belt son of a bitch if you have movement boys and girls go ahead and alternate to another hole generally the best method is to go to the other hole across so that you're putting pressure on the opposite end of the bearing okay boys and girls I am uh, gonna bash this thing out and I will see you back wish me luck if this is Florida don't laugh because maybe one day you might get a rust belt car that you have to beat on um, sucks in the rust belt. It's not the worst thing. It's just, you know, extra work, whatever. Fuck it. So, boys and girls, here's an update. It's, uh, been about five minutes. And this mother... And this bearing is currently stuck in the bore, of course, still. But I've bashed the nuts. Or the... I'm... My fucking... Right, what... What's... This phenomena right now that's happening, boys and girls, is called, um, overwork. <laughs> I got a bit of, you know... Slight headache coming on because I've bashed the shit out of this thing and it's not moving, of course. And my brains are currently scrambled. So I'm trying my best to collect my thoughts so I can put it into uh, a... Uh, oh boy. <laughs> so I can put it into a coherent sentence. That way you boys and girls out there can understand what exactly is going on. So let me shorten this up again here. Boys and girls, we have essentially bashed this thing for the last five minutes it's not moving but i've bashed it so goddamn hard in a couple of holes that the threaded portion of the bearing or uh, bolt is not so good anymore so you'll need to employ the use of a vice grip in order to get it out because of course no socket will fit on the mushroomed head of the bolt so just twist it out. Uh, replace your bolt if need be with a longer bolt. If you live in the rust belt, maybe it's a good idea to pick up two bolts. That way you don't have to revisit your friend. Uh, we're going to tap this bolt so that it fits in better. Oh, come on. Come on, bud. I didn't even hit you that hard, did I? So yeah, that's what's going on. We'll see you back in a bit. Sometimes these things can take quite a while. Um, I'm going to give it another five, ten minutes. And if it doesn't want to cooperate, boys and girls, we're going to take some heat to this thing. And we're going to take some heat to this thing and burn it out of the car. We'll show you that on video. Well, boys and girls, as you can see, the bearing is still there and intact. I thought I was making some progress because the bolt looked like it was moving. But uh, I was wrong. I smashed it so hard that I was able to strip out the threaded portion of this bolt. So this one is officially garbage. But we have another bolt that will hopefully take the punishment. And yeah, now we have one hole that is bad. Uh, so we're one hole down. Well, let's hope that we can get it out with the three holes that we have left. 
Rust Belt for the win. Well, boys and girls, it's been about 20 plus minutes of me smashing this thing. Uh, it may be extremely hard to see, but we do have a slight amount of movement. Uh, we also have some of my blood on the vehicle um, and some blood in this glove which is pooling up right in about here you know when you get that squishy nasty feeling yeah so what i have resorted to before i heat it up that way i don't have to potentially change out that abs sensor if i heat the stupid thing is i got a really big punch if you're wondering where i got this thing from it is a cv axle from a old school mazda 323 yeah it works really well as a punch it's got quite a bit of weight on it and we are slowly but surely making some movement so i don't think i'm going to be pulling the heat out just because the reason why it's best not to heat things up is you could potentially cause yourself some issues especially with the abs sensor and as you can see everything is rotted into place being that it is a rust belt car um, <laughs> a customer had told me that he thought it may come apart easy because the other side did yeah no this uh this is definitely not not what's happening with this uh bearing this one is actually quite uh, stuck in there so yeah just keep going at her and eventually it should come out bigger the hammer the better just make sure not to hit your hands like i have twice uh well i've only hit my thumb once and i got my finger caught between the hammer and the spindle once which caused the blood but uh yeah anyhow that's enough of a break maybe i'll set it up and you guys can see me uh smash this fucking bucket i have also taken the punch and placed it here at an angle and then smashed it with the hammer on either side in order to get the bore and crap inside here so essentially what's holding is just a bunch of rust so what you want to do is just knock it in every which direction that you can get a good swing at it and that'll help break the rust particles that are up in this section here and then it should slowly come out i can't believe i just rambled on for three whole minutes <laughs> holy shit i don't know what it is boys and girls maybe i'm losing my mind i'm becoming delusional from all the percussion that uh my ears and brain have had to endure with this stupid bearing it's been about a good 20 plus minutes and i've had about enough my arms hurt i want to go home already yeah, i'm supposed to yank an engine which ah uh... Now, of course, once you get movement, it's almost always there. But uh, yeah, let's see how much more we can get. Hopefully, it's not too much longer. Oh, you fucker. That hurts pretty good. Are we getting movement? Yeah, ever so fucking slightly. Remember, boys and girls, if you're employing this method, eyeglasses, very important because chunks of the actual hammer or your punch will come off. And if they hit your eyeballs, it'll suck. Uh, I'm telling you this as though I have glasses on myself. I don't because I'm an idiot. Now, let me go get those glasses. Where the fuck are my glasses? I guess I'll wear these red ones because currently with the amount of smashing that I've done, all I see is red. Sometimes, boys and girls, I think I should have picked up a career as a dead-end comedian. I think I would have been more successful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least I make myself laugh, right? All right, continue smashing, boys and girls. Okay, so... Now, I can see a bit of a shiny spot, which means that we've made some movement. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is alternate the bolt to the other side and fucking continue the same process. Okay, so we are currently up in this top hole here. Of course, I can't show you that right now. <laughs> the reason being is because I set my camera up for you guys to see as a stupid bearing moves out of the bore as I smash it. You can see there where I smashed the hub quite heavily. Yeah, boys and girls, same story. Keep hitting it. Hit it from the front, hit it from the back, from the side. Whatever you gotta do, just smash it till it comes out of the hole. Oh, looks like we got some movement. Yeah, when you start seeing more and more dust and rust, that says movement. Let's see here. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Catch your breath. We are uh, almost there. Let's see, we're gonna smash the other side here on the hub. 
coming out, baby. Yeah, it only took a good fucking half an hour, this shit, but here in Florida, it won't even take ten fucking minutes. It just, you just blow on it and it falls out. Anyhow, that's a story for another day, boys and girls. Well, let's get the caliper off here. Go up and marie caliper. Did it come out there? She had all the Yeah, baby! Woo woo! Loose? Yes. Well, boys and girls, that there is the desired effect. Of course, you are not done if you are Rust Belt Mechanic. What gave you that impression? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, my friends. Now, what we must do if you wrapped your caliper up the same way I have is remove the bungee cord just to make sure that you can get the handbrake cable free. Uh, then what we'll need to do is continue percussing. I don't know if percussing is a word. I'll ask, uh, I'll ask Google later on. What we'll need to do is continue smashing the bearing now out of the backing plate. But this is a bit trickier. You've got to be much more gentle. You don't want to damage your backing plate. Of course, uh, remove the bolt, boys and girls. Uh, the bolt that started off as a 17 mil, which is now somewhere between a 19.5 mil and a 20 mil. That will only work with a flex socket because you need that flex in order to wind this thing out. Don't be alarmed when this thing drops. It's not completely separated. Your CV and your backing plate is still holding that stupid bearing in. Now, boys and girls, what we want to do is, as I said before, remove the bungee cord so that we can pull this whole contraption off. So let's find another place to hook this bungee. Just want to grab this guy here. Oh, great. Our pad came out of place because of all the percussion. You know what? We'll leave the caliper on top of the lower control arm and then we'll strap it because you don't want it falling off when you're bashing this thing which 100 percent you will be because rust tight never cooperates with knife that's not toy to enough once you've moved your bungee cord what you want to do is pull the whole assembly off like so oh my god my cut yeah look at that boys and girls that's a nice one it's a nice thick one i got a lot of flesh off of that uh and now uh first things first we will confirm that this bearing is bullshit well, boys and girls, I am happy to say that we picked the right bearing and it is garbage. Good job. What I will say is that if it wasn't a bad bearing, it is now. <laughs> Get your hammer. What you want to do is kind of put your hand around this area here to support the actual uh, hub itself. Don't bash it too aggressively because remember, boys and girls, you are supporting it with your hand. Uh, so just tap it and hopefully it should come out relatively easy, like so. And there we go. See? So the real pain in the ass is essentially this ridge here that sits in the hub. I'll show you what it looks like on the other end in the spindle. There you go, boys and girls. We are looking at our CV shaft. A shit ton of rust. Um, this is caked on pretty good in there. Like, we got a good rust layer. Uh, now we've got to clean that rust layer up and clean the rust layer up in this thing. Uh, too close. Basically, we got to clean the rust up in the backing plate and in the spindle. Most importantly, we will spray it with some paint or some zinc primer and that should be good. As for the bearing, that's too damn close still, Jim. As for the bearing, it has a bit of play now because I bashed the shit out of it right there and there. And now we can send this thing to car heaven. Now, boys and girls, in order to clean out the bore of the spindle, you'll need a bunch of tools that look like this. They're a pain in the ass to do sometimes, but they're not the absolute worst thing. It is a bit time consuming. Of course, you will need your safety protection in the form of eyeglasses, a mask, and hearing protection. That being said, let's go ahead and start with our carbide bit. If you don't have one of these, you can use sandpaper or a drum. This guy here... <laughs> takes away a lot of material quite quickly so if you do have one of these and you are going to use this be very careful and set it to a slow speed you do not want to chew up all kinds of material we're just trying to get rid of the rust push your cv back out of the way as much as possible yeah oh, fuck who put the camera there stupid jimmy when filming don't put the camera in the way let's uh, move this over to the side in the top of the screen here in the bore is our abs sensor by all means, 
Do not hit the ABS sensor with anything. Doesn't like any sort of percussion, especially direct impact. It will ruin it. I mean, the possibility of it being destroyed by you smashing out the bearing is there, but at the end of the day, got no choice. this guy just to clean up whatever's left. Make sure that in the bore there is no chunks of rust left and any areas that are excessively, excessively rotted. Double check to make sure you didn't screw up the ABS sensor because that's a bad idea. Then go ahead and grab your flat disc or cookie as they're commonly called in the North American Toronto, Ontario area, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Well, me and my friends call them cookies. I don't know. And start grinding. Size calorie intelligent cookie. Now remember, boys and girls, same thing as every other thing, we are not trying to remove material. trying to get rid of the rust as you can see there on the hub I don't know if you can see it in camera but uh, oh, let's get a close-up now of course boys and girls the reason why we work so hard to try and get rid of the rust is two things so that the bearing has a flat mating surface to mate to which means that you won't have potential issues with alignment the second thing is so that the next time if you ever have to service your vehicle or the bearing again it comes out relatively easily and you don't bash your gut them fingers into oblivion like this for i mean what what is the price tag that is worth it is it really worth it my fucking hands hurt it's just stupid so obviously you don't want to do the same thing so this is why we take these steps that being said let's get a blower we'll blow this cavity out and then we'll spray the hole now boys and girls the time has come for us to spray the spindle go ahead and grab your favorite paint what i like to use is zinc well through primer this stuff works really well it also dries really quickly uh, of course you should know now if you've watched my videos in the past that it's time to shake well it's always best if you shake it with the right hand because i'm right-handed but uh, sometimes we try out the left because that's just the way the crookie crumbles anyhow give it a nice spurt make sure you try your best not to hit your abs sensor Make sure you wear a mask as well. Don't be like Jimmy. Now, if you got any on your ABS sensor, you can scrape it off. It's not really going to make much of a difference unless you get gobs of it on. But hey, you know, just pull it off like so on your CV shaft as well. Again, same thing. Really not going to make much of a difference, but yeah, whatever. 
Now, boys and girls, with everything nice and sprayed, give it a few minutes to dry up. And we can now go ahead and install our bearing. Now, you're going to need to do the same thing to your backing plate, of course, here, as well as here. It is most important to do it on this side here because there is a layer of rust that is much higher than this portion here where it sits on the hub. Now, the reason why you want to grind the rust off of here is because if your backing plate doesn't sit properly, you're not going to obviously torque the stupid thing to spec properly. It's not going to have a flat mating surface. Yeah. And and if you keep knocking this, trying to show people at home what you've done, like I am, just respray it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, boys and girls, we'll see you back in a bit. Okay, boys and girls, we are almost ready to put on our bearing. What I have done now is put a little bit of grease on the shaft. We just want to make sure you work it into the spline section so that no rust builds up on that. Then you want to take your new bearing and put a little bit of grease in this section here that also helps with rust prevention. You do not want any grease in this section here. That'll be a very bad idea, boys and girls. It will cause your bearing to fail prematurely so don't do that second thing you want to do is spin your bearing before you put it on why because mistakes happen and things are made sometimes by people who may not know what the hell they're doing and or maybe having a really bad day and you don't want to be that guy who installs something that wasn't properly checked or manufactured because that'll piss you off now boys and girls take your brake shield slide it into place okay let it hang there now boys and girls with your brake shield resting there what you're going to do is take the bolts that you took out that hold the bearing into place you're going to make sure you have anti-seize them all four of them slide them into place push them right through the spindle with them in place take your backing plate assembly and line up the holes is very tricky to do with your camera in the way. If you guys are filming at home, you will understand. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to get a 14 mil socket on one of those bolts. You're going to basically rotate the socket as though you're tightening it and hold your bearing in place. Once you catch them, then you can go ahead and run it up. With your bearing, it doesn't matter which way it goes in as long as this guy is clean and you don't have any debris, it should slide in nice and easily. There is no top or bottom. Slide it in nice and gently. Get your socket on one of the bolts and just catch it by hand. Make sure you catch all of the bolts by hand. Do not catch one or two and then ugga dugga the rest. You will cause yourself a potential headache if you cross thread them. No, you will cause yourself a headache if you cross thread them. So don't make that mistake, boys and girls. See, boys and girls, easy peasy. Did you know that a California mechanic probably gets exactly the same or more than us mechanics up here in the Rust Belt? And they don't even know what the hell acetylene oxygen torches are down there. I swear to God. Some of my friends from California there have laughed at me in the past when I have told them of the methods that we have to employ in order to separate certain certain joints, bearings, and rusted out parts from a vehicle. It's not, uh... Not funny for us, but hilarious for them. Yeah, boys and girls. I guess the moral of the story is you want to be a mechanic, don't be a rust belt mechanic. It sucks and you don't get paid more for it. Unless you have good clientele, which thankfully I do. With your bolts threaded in by hand, boys and girls, what you can do is use your Ugga Dugga gun, a small low torque one, to go ahead and run those bolts up. Make sure you do it in a, cro a crisscross pattern. That way you're running it up on either side and you're not going to have the bearing bind up in the bore. Now, boys and girls, go ahead, grab your torque wrench. Set your torque wrench to 48 foot-pounds or 65 newton meters. Make sure you torque this thing in a crisscross pattern. Wasn't that hard? All right, uh, 47. There we go, 48. Now we can start putting our brakes back on. Now, boys and girls, before you go ahead and put on your rotor, what you want to do is take some anti-seize or some white lithium grease and spread it all over your hub. That way you don't have this thing rot to hell and you won't have an issue. Cover your Korean-made hub. 
Oh, look at that. Korean made. Look at that. Well, boys and girls, hopefully it's not the same uh, Koreans who are making this hub that make the Hyundai 2 liter <laughs> 2.4 motors. Otherwise, we're going to be replacing this hub relatively soon. And you know what that means? We're going to be very happy that we did all of this extra work to make sure it doesn't rot up. Mm -hmm. it just keep spreading it. Of course, make sure, boys and girls, you don't leave any bristles or foreign material behind. That way, you don't have a potential wobble happen when you put on your rotor. No adjustment should be needed, boys and girls. So all you gotta do is just put it on nice and square. Do not force it on if it doesn't want to go. You may have moved your shoes, which is causing the issue. Now, boys and girls, we can grab our caliper and put that thing into place. Okay, boys and girls. Go ahead, grab your caliper, make sure that your pads haven't fallen out of place because of all the percussion. Slide this thing into place. Then of course, grab your anti-seize bolts and thread these guys in by hand. Always make sure that your brake hose is sitting naturally the way this one is. It's not coiled up or bent over somehow. You'd be surprised. I've seen that done. I've seen that mistake done by a few mechanics, which is really surprising. But it can cause your braking system to act really funny and fail altogether. Grab your torque wrench, boys and girls, and torque these bad boys to 49 foot-pounds or 66 newton meters. Good job, Jimmy. Now, boys and girls, the time has come for us to install our CV nut. If you have ever tried to torque one of these things in the past, you will know that it can be a pain in the ass, especially on non-vented rear rotors, because there's no way to hold the rotor or the spindle or hub assembly from spinning. So you can't torque it. Well, boys and girls, the nice thing about having a 2011 Outback is they come with electronic emergency brakes. What that means is you can activate them and they are a shit ton stronger than the ones that came with a manual handbrake handle which is not very strong shall we say what you're going to do is take your nut place it on the vehicle thread it in by hand of course take a low torque agadaga gun or high torque hammer it into place of course then boys and girls take your torque wrench set it to 177 foot pounds or 240 newton meters of torque there we go, boys and girls. The only good thing about electronic parking brakes. Now, boys and girls, go ahead, grab yourself a chisel and a hammer, and then just stake the nut. There you go, boys and girls. Go ahead, boys and girls, grab a can of white lithium grease and give this guy a spurt. Of course, before you apply the lithium grease, make sure you shake the can really well. Definitely better with the right. With your wheel on the car, boys and girls, make sure you thread these guys up by hand. Now, boys and girls, very important, before you go ahead and tighten these guys up, what you wanna do is make sure you release your emergency brake. With your brakes released, boys and girls, make sure you can force your wheel all the way onto the hub and then use a small low torque agadaga gun to run up your bolts. This, boys and girls, is an important step because you don't want to damage your emergency brake assembly by leaving them engaged as you push everything in to your hub. That would be a bad idea, so don't make that mistake. Lower this thing, torque the wheels, and take this junker for a test drive. Of course, boys and girls, go ahead and torque your wheels now to 90 foot-pounds or 120 newton meters. We're now good to go, boys and girls. Make sure you pump your brakes before you go ahead and take this thing for a test drive. And of course, make sure the thing is nice and quiet. If it's not, well, maybe you'll have to change another bearing, boys and girls. Well, boys and girls, that's all she wrote for this one. If you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one. It is not a bearing per se. What? The fuck I just said? Man, put that shit back together, motherfucker. I should start doing rehearsals. This is bullshit. You know how many bloopers I got? Then fire a wheel up. Then go ahead and fire a wheel. Oh, fucking compressor. Now, boys and girls, if you don't have any play, 
I said that in the previous clip, you idiot Jimmy. Without starting the vehicle and running the car, so what the fuck am I trying to say? Get yourself a 19 mil and fire the wheels off. What? <laughs> Lug nuts, Jimmy? Whoa. Your next step, boys and girls, is going to be to take a flat screwdriver and slowly and gently pry your front. What the fuck did I just say? This is the rear. God damn it. Only a dick, man. Come on. Yeah. Fuck it. I don't know what the hell was that. Was that the air or something? Did I hit the... I don't know. Maybe I hit the damn thing. I don't know. Oh, for fuck's sakes. My finger has a bandage. I can't stop the video. Damn it! Burn it the fuck out of the car. Well, boys and girls, um, been about 20 minutes of me smashing this fucking pile of shit. As this piece of shit. Oh, damn it! Yeah, that's the same finger with the, uh, with the plaster or uh, with the band aid on it. Cook it from the other. Okay, you know what? This is gonna be a useless ass shot because you guys are like, what the fuck, bro? We can't see shit. And you know what? Like, what the hell? Focus, you fucking fuck, you mother. Of course, you will need your safety protection. Protection. As you can see there, boys and girls, you can still see the original machine marks from the factory. Now, the reason why we try so hard, or I'll. The reason why I do my best to get rid of the rust is though so that it's not so that I can speak English properly, that's for damn sure. That's a terrible angle. So let me change this whole thing up now. Son of a bitch. Get, the, get off the fucking car socket. Give, give me back the socket car. Greedy fuck. Take my blood now the socket. Prick. Oh, well, yeah, we need a 10 inch for that. Make sure you torque this thing in a cross hatch section. Section. Make sure you torque this thing in a crossed hatch port. Cross hatch? What the fuck is wrong with me today? Make sure you torque this thing in a crisscross action. Action? Fuck, man. Fuck! <laughs> now, boys and girls, before you go ahead and put your hub back. Uh, hub? Oh, Jesus Christ. Now, let's go ahead. Ah, uh, why the fuck we put the CV nut on? Well, that's a whole nother step on its own. Stupid. Now, now, we're with Al. Face punch and the just. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. My motherfucking hand. Hammer? Where you at, Hammer? How? How? Fuck is it? There you go. Voila, boys and girls. Voila. <laughs> so stupid. There you have it, boys and girls. Your CV nut is now in place. You can go ahead and grab your favorite can of... Go ahead, grab a... I'm tired and hungry. Get yourself a low ugga dugga gun. A low <laughs> torque, Jimmy. Forgot a whole word. Grab yourself a low torque ugga dugga gun and zip these wheels up. It sounds so stupid. <laughs> and zip these wheels up. The fuck is happening there? Now, bear, now, with your brakes released, go ahead and make sure that you can push your hub. What? Well, boys and girls, that's all she wrote for this video. Hopefully you found it entertaining and informative. Of course, if you did, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to, what did I say? I don't know if I... Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit... I said don't forget already, damn it. Why is my own ending so hard? Eh, yeah, fuck, I fucked it up.